Hi everyone, this video covers navigation and selection. You can follow along with your own file or by downloading the practice file I'm using from the close out link in the video description below. If you're using the practice file with me, hopefully you've added it to a folder in your library. Um, I've added mine into a Clo basic training folder and um, you can access it here below. If you need to learn how to do that, that's going to be in our layout video. Um, that will show you how to add things to your library. So to bring it into your workspace, you can just double click on it. I'm going to right click and add to my workspace because I want to show you something here. You'll see when you add to your workspace, you get this box for translation. So 000 is the intersection of the X, Y, and Z axis. So it's this point right here. So this is where my file, my avatar, and my garment are going to load, depending on which one you check here. Um, even if you're loading only the garment, the garment will come in as it was on the avatar if the avatar is standing at 000. So you don't need to worry about the garment coming in on the floor. I wanted you to understand this um, point because we're going to talk about it a little bit later. So I'm actually just going to overwrite my file anyway and open it. I just wanted to point that out. You can also adjust any of those measurements. If you had an avatar in here and you wanted to bring one in beside it, you would just increase or decrease the x-axis on the translation. So that's good to know. Um, so you can see my avatar is standing here at the 000 point. You can also see if I move my pattern out of the way a bit, I have this shadow of the avatar at the 00 in 2D. Um, this shadow is proportionate to my real avatar. So this is nice as a guide if you need it for creating patterns from scratch or just in general, it's a good working practice to keep your pattern in the vicinity of your avatar. What you'll find, so if I copy paste this pattern way out here in space, in the 3D window, it's going to come in out in space as well. So it's just good practice to use your 2D as a guide for um, everything you're doing in 3D. Let's begin navigating in our 3D window. Hopefully you're using a three button mouse with a scroll wheel, but if not, I'll go over other devices you might be using. The regular three button mouse is recommended because it allows you to navigate entirely with one hand. So it's definitely the easiest if you're a beginner. You can refer to our user settings video on how to set up your device if anything I show here doesn't seem to be working for you. Um, by default, on a PC, your user settings will be set to a regular three-button mouse, and by default on a Mac, they will be set to a magic mouse. So first, if you roll the scroll wheel back and forth, you're going to zoom in and zoom out. And this is going to be true in the 2D or the 3D window. What you'll notice is in 3D, it's just going to go in and out from your current viewpoint, but in 2D, depending on where you are on the screen, it will zoom into those areas. For a magic mouse or a trackpad, you'll use two fingers and drag up and down or however you currently scroll on that device. So it's probably just the two fingers dragging, but um, you'll need to check your mouse settings if that doesn't work. Next is rotating. So rotating is only applicable in the 3D window, obviously. So to rotate, you're going to right click your mouse button down and then move your mouse around. You'll see if you hold shift while you do this, it's going to lock your avatar into that axis and it doesn't matter which direction you go, it's just going to lock into that movement that you do at first. So this is nice if you want to make sure that you're looking on the same plane at something or if you want to make sure you're looking directly from the side, um, you can lock it in. For a Mac or a um, trackpad, you are going to also right click and move around on your magic mouse. 
On your trackpad, you'll right click down with one finger and then move that finger around the trackpad. So depending on what version or generation you have of your laptop or mouse, you may need to mess with the settings of this on your computer, um, just depending on whether or not you have an actual right click button or if you've set up the right click on your like touch sensitive mouse or trackpad. Lastly is panning. So to pan, you're going to hold down your scroll wheel as though it's a button and then move around your screen. This is going to work the exact same in 2D or 3D. You can see my 2D is working um, in real time. My 3D is a little bit slower. That's because this Garmin is actually already in high resolution. Um, and we'll talk about that later. But just know that's the reason in this particular file that she's moving a little bit more slowly than your pattern. This is where other devices get a little bit trickier. So for a magic mouse or a trackpad, you'll need to hold down the option key on a Mac or the alt key on a PC while left clicking and moving. So that's option on a Mac, alt on a PC, and just left click and drag and that's going to pan around your screen. Sometimes when rotating around in your 3D window, your axis might get off. So if you've been moving around freely, or maybe you click on something, you'll notice that it's going to swing around that thing. Um, depending on your user settings, if you deselect, it will reset your point of rotation to the center. But you may need to adjust this in user settings, and sometimes just depending on how far zoomed in you are or what you have going on, you just might feel like your point of rotation is off-centered. So there's a few easy ways to bring yourself back to center. So if I right click in my 3D background, I can see all of these different viewpoints. So front, three quarter left, all of these viewpoints have hotkeys associated with them. They're going to be as though the avatar is standing on the five key of a number keypad. And you'll see that in that way, the numbers make sense and it'll help you be able to memorize them. Um, it doesn't make as much sense if you look at your numbers across the top of your keyboard in order. Um, if you can't remember anything right away, the two key is probably the most useful. So this also helps if you just end up off in space and you don't know where you are, you just hit the two key and she'll be front and center. This is also useful, like I was saying about the shift key, if you want to make sure that you're on the same plane going all the way around and you're looking at your avatar perfectly straight on, maybe you want to see if a garment is hiking from the side, then the two key will be your, your check to make sure that you're looking at her perfectly straight on before you then want to rotate around holding shift. Similarly, in the 2D window, if you ever get lost in space over here, you can right click in the 2D background and choose this option, Zoom Extents All. The hotkey is the close parenthesis. This is going to clip your window to the full extent of your pattern. So this is kind of like the Adobe hotkey of Command or Control Zero. It's going to crop the window to everything that you have in it. And the last thing for navigation is the focus zoom. This is something that works in 3D. If you click on a point on your garment and you hit F, it's going to zoom into that point. So this is really nice if you're just trying to get to a certain detail and you're having trouble navigating around to it or it's something that's a bit out of your way. So that's the focus zoom. In Clo, your main selection tools are the Select Move tool in the 3D window and the Transform Pattern tool in the 2D window. The hotkey for Select Move is Q and the hotkey for Transform Pattern is A. You'll notice that when you're selected on a tool, it highlights in blue like these are right now. So I'm on both of my selection tools. You'll also see that a lot of the tools that cross over between the 2D and 3D windows when you select them in one, they will select in both windows. 
So to select, it's just a left click, as you might imagine. You'll see when I select patterns in 3D, I get this little blue dot in the 2D window. This is called a picking point. This is to help you figure out where you are. So even experienced pattern makers might have trouble finding like where you are on a pattern piece, especially something like this that's a binding or trim that is just a long rectangle. And the picking point will help you find out where you are on that pattern piece. Um, and this is really useful if you're not an experienced pattern maker and you're having trouble telling just what's what. Um, to some people, these patterns might look a little goofy. Um, this legging doesn't have an out seam, so it looks especially different than a normal pant. So the picking point will help you find where you are in 2D. You'll notice when I select in each window, that same pattern will highlight in both windows. So in 3D, it highlights in 2D and vice versa. If you're noticing in the 2D window, some patterns are highlighting in a brighter blue outline when I select other patterns. These patterns are the symmetric copy. So in some, nothing else highlights because there is no symmetric copy. These are a front and a back, so they're not linked but the left and right leg are linked, meaning if I edit one of these, the other side is going to edit as well. Don't confuse this for selection. That doesn't mean that when I move this one pattern that this one will also move. I would have to multi-select both of these. So to multi-select, you're going to hold Shift You'll notice as you multi-select, you can keep going back and forth between 2D and 3D. But if I select something that's already selected in the group, it's going to deselect it and remove it from that group. Another way to multi-select in 2D is to marquee over things. So just left click and drag, and that's going to marquee over your pattern. You can see a difference in some programs to Clo is that I need to marquee over the pattern entirely. So this waistband piece is not actually selecting because I'm not covering it in its entirety. So this is actually really nice. As you can see, I've got a lot of patterns here and it's easy to overlap other patterns. And so Clo wants it to be easy for you to grab what you want and to not accidentally grab other things. When you multi-select in 3D, you will see that you do get a picking point for every pattern piece where you've clicked on it. One thing to note, since we haven't covered simulation or sewing, if you accidentally select something and move it out of the way, you may also see sewing lines coming from it. And if you do this at this stage, just hit Command or Control Z to edit undo that. This always happens when we're going over selection and at this stage it's just easiest to undo the problem. You'll notice when you do this that you may see this little gizmo here. We call it the gizmo and this is actually how you're going to be able to move things in 3D when simulation is off. So when things are just solid pieces like this. Um, we'll learn more about the gizmo in the next video of arrangement. So the hotkey to select all other than just marking over everything is a command or control A, depending on if you're a Mac or PC. Another option for selection is if you right click on something in the 2D background, at the very top menu you get the option select all with same property. You can choose all pattern pieces that are either on the same layer, have the same particle distance, or the same fabric. So you'll learn more about what particle distance is and layering in future videos. Don't confuse layering with layers in Adobe programs, it's not the same. But the most useful one here and that you'll learn pretty quickly is going to be select all with same fabric. So you can see here, she has these little mesh um, combo pieces on her garment, but I've just selected everything that's in the speckle spandex. And lastly, just as part of selection, if you ever wanted to actually delete anything from your file, you just select it and hit the backspace key 
or the delete key. And this also is going to work with your avatar. So you can actually just clear your entire screen with that. And of course, if you do anything by accident, Command or Control Z is going to bring it back.